eye-opener. Despite being Democratic voters, and in some cases lifelong Democrats, Democratic voters are finding infinitely more common ground with Republican leaders. Whether the promises made by GOP leaders are kept or even said in earnest, they are at least said by leaders on the right. Democratic leaders, on the other hand, are so jaded as to not even offer up solutions to the biggest issues a majority of Americans face today. Regardless of the harm that a particular issue may cause, Democratic leaders can't even seem to allow ideas that may mitigate the most negative impacts even leave their mouths. While Trump is viewed as the devil in the flesh, he at least offers up policies that people can understand and get behind. His four years in office, despite a pandemic, were more prosperous than the almost four years of the Biden administration. And now, a person who was lousy as a candidate when they actually ran for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States is offering solutions that only benefit those who can first solve even bigger monetary issues on their own. $25,000 to first-time home buyers only benefits those who can afford to buy a home in the first place. To take advantage of this campaign promise from Harris, one would have to have the capacity to pay three or four thousand dollars a month to cover the mortgage, insurance, skyrocketing property taxes, and, in the case of a condominium, the homeowners association, otherwise known as HOA fees. And given that the government has done nothing to stop corporate vultures from buying out homeowners associations in places like Florida so they can basically evict condo owners who refuse to sell their homes, it's hard to understand the benefit of even owning a home in America today. Then there is the Harris plan to help small businesses. A $50,000 tax deduction sounds great, but that business has to have enough profit for its previous year to be able to use such a benefit. This delayed gratification does nothing to help start a small business. So who is this going to convince? I guess if, as a small business, you struggled to pay taxes this year, $50,000 in tax breaks for next year, or more likely some year after might appear to be a light at the end of the tunnel. To far too many, however, that light will prove to only be a train barreling down on you that will most likely embody the runaway inflation America will continue to face an inflation that makes the dollar of today only worth three cents compared to the value of the dollar at its inception. The opportunity economy that Harris keeps talking about only seems to be an opportunity for those who already have money. Now, while Trump's plans to help Americans don't sound groundbreaking, they at least provide immediate relief. No tax on tips will immediately benefit all service people whose customers pay by credit card. As for his plan to increase tariffs on imports, Trump has the right idea, but it may be coming too late to salvage America's standing. For years, the author of the book referenced below has said that the United States should put tariffs on companies where less than 51% of its workforce were Americans. The author even cited one very important cycle which occurs in international corporation labor practices. In almost every instance in which a corporation moves its factory around the world, the end result was that what little manufacturing that did return to America always paid around half of the wage that position was paid before the corporation started globetrotting. In one instance, the book referenced below even pointed out the irony of workers in Mexico complaining about an auto factory that was initially moved from the United States was moving to India because Indian labor was cheaper than Mexican labor. The author, Chris Osman, wasn't faulting the Mexican workers. He was pointing out how the rich use their money against everyone else. In the end, the auto manufacturing jobs that did return to the U.S. were cut in half. One of the grievances in a recent auto worker strike was that long-term workers who were working side-by-side -side with new hires made twice as much as the new hires, even though they were both doing the exact same job. This is how capitalism is supposed to work. Too bad so many Americans have been brainwashed into believing that capitalism is the only economic system that can work. Too bad more people have ignored the truths presented in Mr. Osman's book. As for the rest of Trump's plans, I don't remember them because I don't think they're significant. I do, however, remember that their benefit would be felt immediately, not next year or the year after that, immediately. This is why Trump will win in November. 
People have seen Harris's plans for the past three and a half years. They've seen Donald Trump's plan of action and, for the most part, lived better back then. Regardless of whether Trump was the reason for more prosperity or not, people's perception is that he was. The opposite can be said about Kamala Harris. Even though she was the vice president, her fate is tied to Biden's administration. And if an honest accounting of Biden's history came out, not a single black person or person of color would vote for Kamala. She even pointed out Biden's racism before she hitched her wagon to his, and black people still voted for him. It's like black people suffer from that syndrome where the victim falls in love with their tormentor. To find out other ways you're being screwed by your current leaders, check out the posts on this blog daily. Learn about the biggest and worst issues that America and its people face today. You can also check in to also learn about those issues that America and its people will face in the near and distant future. If, however, you would like to learn about possible solutions to either mitigate the worst impacts of these issues or solutions to avoid them altogether, keep listening. The problems we face are not as complicated as so many leaders and news reports claim. They are man-made and are only claimed as complicated so those who are responsible can maintain control. For example, there is a persistent argument that moving government is like turning a cruise ship around. It is supposedly a long process that can only be achieved incrementally. While this may be true for laws and policies that benefit the majority of Americans, it does not seem to be so for that smallest of American minorities. When one examines the policies and laws that benefit that minority known as the elite or the rich, the speed at which those laws are passed is exponentially faster. While most of us sit on the deck chairs waiting for the Titanic to avoid the myriad of icebergs of which we seem to continually run afoul, the elite ride comfortably in speedboats. If, according to our Constitution, all men are created equal, why do the rich live quite different lives than the rest of us? Where is our speedboat? In 2018, Chris Osman wrote a book highlighting the problems humanity would face if more power, wealth, and control were funneled to a small cohort of individuals, groups, or organizations. In that book, Mr. Osman provided solutions, from himself and others, to the inevitable problems we would all face. In it, he also provided a means for the public to analyze, compare, and contrast the words and deeds of those we've chosen to follow against our real-world experiences. To this end, Mr. Osman provides the means for readers to disseminate information as provided by their new sources of choice, their elected officials, and any other authority they choose to follow. The book, titled Solutions, Enough Complaining, Let's Fix America, offers a means to hold leaders up to not just a higher standard than is currently accepted, but one that will improve lives. So, don't trust Washington I mean the one in the District of Columbia. Click the link below and get your copy today.